You know, save that seat for me, because I'll be sitting down, you know, and as soon as I get a bottle, we'll both be drinking. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm George Zeppenfeld, uh, president of the Association of Hispanic Healthcare Executives, and it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you to a uh, series of forums. Uh, this is our, our second for the year 2013 2014. It's made possible by our uh, national, regional, and community partners who are here this evening. Hope you get to know them. Uh, also, uh, through their support, uh, we are able to uh, develop uh, the educational pipeline of Latino leaders through our Managers Council and our Student and Young Professional Committee. Uh, also, over the last seven years, 
uh, working with uh, the other organizations that uh, form members of our roundtable of professional Hispanic health associations. Uh, we have uh, yearly meetings, and many of their members are here tonight. Uh, Maria Elena Fonti, who's the uh, president of the Association, National Association of Hispanic Nurses is there, and we have uh, others that will come in during the course of the evening. So working with the round table that uh, represents uh, the National Hispanic Medical Association, the National Association of Hispanic Nurses, the Hispanic Dental Association, the Latino Medical Student Association, Association of Hispanic Mental Health Professionals, and the uh, National Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Health. It's my pleasure to uh, have you here this evening. Uh, in addition to thanking all of our sponsors, I want to have a, a thank you to uh, the host of this evening's uh, dinner reception, and that's going to be the new Mexican res Festival restaurant that will be serving dinner afterwards. So don't feel cheated if you're saying, oh, what, this is dinner? This is just a little snack for you. Uh, and also Casa de Vinos that's providing the wine. Um, I've been asked to make the following announcement and I hope that uh, you will honor it. Uh, due to corporate compliance issues, uh, there can be no uh, video or audio taping of the Google presentation uh, and we ask that you hold it confidentially. So I don't want to hear any clicks of uh, uh, iPhones uh, taking pictures of any presentations, if you please. So, um, so at some future point, we'll be able to uh, provide a forum that we'll be able to sit down with representatives of Google to further develop the relationship and have an opportunity to share some of their data with them. Um, now, unfortunately, um, uh, I'm sure you all know we're in government shutdown. Uh, so uh, one of the people that was impacted was Ms. Booney Sanchez, who was going to be here from the Census Bureau. But fortunately, we were able to get someone from New York's uh, Health Exchange, uh, Rebecca Jackson. Rebecca was gracious enough to accommodate her calendar to be with us tonight. So in addition to uh, Rebecca, I want to particularly thank uh, the board for their assistance in putting together this forum. You know, these forums are very difficult to put together and very costly but uh, uh, we were also able to get the chair of our policy committee, uh, Dr. Miriam Zavala, to serve as a moderator. So uh, um, Miriam will be uh, giving a little synopsis of each panelist after the panelist speaks, and she will be entertaining no more than two preliminary questions from the audience. Uh, the rest of the questions you can certainly ask during the uh, networking reception. Uh, Lastly, let me say that uh, without the organizational support that we receive from our national, regional, uh, community, diversity, and nonprofit sponsors during the course of the year, as well as the individual membership dues of members, uh, these programs are impossible. Uh, and I know that many of you that uh, have attended our annual uh, awards have been impressed by the uh, quality of both the uh, honorees that we present. So I want you to mark your calendars uh, that uh, our 14th annual Healthcare Diversity Awards will be on Friday, June 20th, and you'll be getting uh, information about that. Uh, last me, lastly, let me just ask you to please put your uh, cell phone devices on vibrate so that we don't interrupt uh, the uh, uh, speakers. So I hope that you'll enjoy this evening's presentation. We hope to have portions of it uh, on our website for our guests that are here this evening. And uh, again, on behalf of the association, uh, I want to thank and uh, invite Dr. Miriam Zavad to come up to the stage. Thank you. Um, I'm the chair of the policy committee, and I have the honor of being the moderator this evening. First, I would like to give you a snapshot of the Hispanic community before I introduce the first speaker. We count as 53 million Hispanic in this great country of ours um, in 2012. That makes about 17% of the total population. In New York City, we are 2.27 million Hispanics. 
And 80% of that 2.27 million Hispanics, 80% of Hispanics speak Spanish in their homes. The five largest Hispanic group in New York State are Puerto Rican, Dominican, Mexican, Ecuadorian, and Colombian. So now I would like to uh, have the honor of introducing Rebecca Jackson. She is from the New York State Department of Health, External Affairs, Outreach, and Marketing. Rebecca joined the New York State of Health in May 2013 to work on the External Affairs Outreach and Marketing Team. She is responsible for outreach efforts in downstate New York. Previously, Rebecca was a Deputy projector, uh, Project Director at the National Alliance of Hispanic Health. She managed community programs nationwide focused on diabetes, health disease, obesity prevention and control. She also oversaw a Child Health Insurance Reauthorization Act Cycle One grant to increase enrollment and retention of eligible Hispanic children in government health insurance programs across seven states. Ms. Jackson. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Um, my name again is Rebecca Jackson, and I am an outreach coordinator with the New York State of Health, the official health place mark. Uh, excuse me, the official health plan marketplace. Um, my email address is listed here. Unfortunately, I won't be able to stay uh, for the event later on today. So if you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'd also like to thank the, so, uh, the Hispanic Healthcare Executives and the National Hispanic Chamber of Commerce on Health and the Grupo Parada for having me here today. So we were very excited to have the New York State of Health open on October 1st, exactly one week ago today. Um, and the New York State of Health is an organized marketplace. It's one-stop shopping where individuals, families, and small businesses can shop for and compare in different health insurance plans, both private and public. Um, it's also the only place where you can check to see if you're eligible for any sort of financial assistance and then see what that financial assistance looks like in terms of your premiums. Um, and then it's also a place where you can enroll in health plans. Uh, the marketplace really has two different components. Um, it has a individual marketplace and it also has a small business marketplace. Uh, the individual marketplace is for individuals and families and then the small business marketplace is for small businesses with 50 or fewer eligible employees. And I also want to note that small businesses are not required to offer health insurance uh, by law, but there are a lot of benefits for them to offer health insurance through the marketplace, such as tax credits and help in terms of administrative building as well. So in terms of New York's uninsured, um, right now there are about 2.7 million New Yorkers under the age of 65 who do not have health insurance. That's about 16% of the population of New York. Um, and many of these people are actually workers. They are working full time and they don't receive health insurance through their jobs and it affects them and also their families. Um, and because of this, it means that they're unable to get the necessary care that they need uh, because of the costs. And ultimately, it's really the taxpayers who shoulder the burden of paying for this. So who's going to enroll in the New York State of Health? Uh, we believe that over the next three years, about 1.1 million New Yorkers are going to enroll in health insurance. And if you look at the graph, about two thirds of those will be enrolling through the individual marketplace. And about a, a third will be through the small business marketplace, 450,000 uh, New Yorkers. Um, in terms of who these people are, if you're looking at it by race, race or ethnicity, um, in the state of New York, um, for the individual marketplace, um, about 20% of those almost are going to be Hispanic. And then if you look at the small business marketplace, 21% of those are going to be Hispanic. So that's, you know, that's the second largest group after white non-Hispanics who are going to be affected by this and who will have the benefits of health insurance and rolling through health insurance through the marketplace. Um, at the statewide level, also in terms of language, Spanish is the most commonly spoken language after English. Um, and now all this information is at the, at the statewide level, but I think many of you recognize that New York State is very diverse and, um, you know, and, and this information really varies on a region by region basis. So because of that, we also have some information um, on a regional basis. So if you take a look at 
some of these graphs, you'll really see that there's a, there's a big difference between um, the, the, the number of Hispanics and the percentage of Hispanics in different parts of the state. So for example, if you look at New York City, Westchester, Rockland, um, Hispanics make up 41% of the population. That's a huge number of them. And then also if you look at Long Island, it's 38% of the population. So there's a lot of people uh, uh, in these communities, a huge percentage of these communities who will benefit from the New York State of Health. In addition to that, in terms of language, if you take a look at the, the most commonly spoken languages in the state on a region by region basis, yes, some of the states still have English as the primary language, but then if you take a look at New York City again, 40% uh, speak Spanish at home. That's a huge number of Spanish speakers, and it's important that they are receiving information on the health insurance marketplace in a language that they understand. So also in terms of race and ethnicity by uh, New York City, broken down even more so, if you take a look at the different counties, um, Hispanics make up a huge percentage of the city. So in Bronx, it's 62%, so they're the largest uh, racial ethnic group in the city. Um, if you look at Queens County, it's 40%. Richmond County um, has, Richmond and Kings County have the lowest at 29%, but that's still, you know, about a third of the population who are Hispanic. And in terms of language, you'll also see, you know, very similar trends for New York City. Uh, in Bronx, about almost 60% of the people speak Spanish at home, um, and it's at least, um, it's at least a quarter of the, of the population who speaks Spanish in all uh, counties of the city. So when will people enroll in the New York State of Health? Uh, open enrollment, as I said before, started uh, last Tuesday, October 1st, and that enrollment period is for six months. So it goes from October 1st until March 31st, and uh, for coverage that begins on January 1st. Um, and that open enrollment period is set, but unless you have a qualifying event. And a qualifying event might include uh, losing a job, for example, or having your income change, or uh, getting divorced or married, or having a baby. So you can enroll, excuse me, you can enroll outside of that six month period with one of those life events. Now, if you're talking about people who are eligible for Medicaid or Child Health Plus, uh, public health insurance programs, that enrollment period is year round. So they can enroll outside of that six month period. And then also for small businesses. Small businesses can choose to offer health insurance to their employees year round. So they don't have to worry about that six month enrollment period as well. So how will people enroll? I know that digital media is a, a huge portion of today's conversation, so uh, I want to let you know about our web portal that we have that will make it easy to enroll and shop and can compare different health insurance plans. Uh, the web portal will process applications for Medicaid, for Child Health Plus, so public health insurance programs. Um, it will also process application for the individual marketplace and the small business marketplace. Um, I want to let you know that as of today, uh, the, with, open, with uh, the marketplace open for one week, we have enrolled 44,000 New Yorkers. It's a huge amount of people. And we've also, had, um, we've also helped about 26,000 New Yorkers with questions through our phone line. So there's clearly a lot of demand out there. There's a lot of people who need health insurance and, um, and there's even more people who are just taking a look at the website and shopping and comparing their different options and then maybe uh, going back and, and speaking to family members to see what option works best for them as well. Um, I also want to briefly talk about um, the customer service uh, number that we have. Um, they're open to answer questions and they can also enroll people. Um, and they are accepting applications. They can refer you to help in person. Um, and the hours are 8 to 8, Monday through Friday, and then 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday. And I think it's really important to have hours that are outside of normal business hours so that people can call um, and have assistance, even if they're working you know, a full-time job or more than one job. Um, there's also going to be help available in multiple different languages. And there will be oral interpretation, but in including uh, in, on top of oral interpretation, there will be many bilingual staff uh, in Spanish as well who can actually have a conversation with somebody and enroll them. Let's see. So there will also be in-person assistance for uh, individuals and small businesses who are looking to enroll. Um, and those uh, individuals will be located all throughout the state at convenient times and locations. 
Um, there are three different types of in-person assisters, and I know that uh, there are some of you, some of you in this audience um, are navigators or certified application counselors. Um, so I'm just going to very briefly break out the three different groups um, and explain them. Uh, navigators are going to be completing applications for individuals and small businesses, um, and they have all received extensive training. So it was a two-day online training and a three-day in-person training. And uh, they receive compensation from the Department of Health, so they receive funding. Um, the, the second group are insurance agents or brokers, and these, these uh, individuals have always offered assistance to small businesses, and they will continue to do so. Um, and we have already certi we've already uh, certified um, almost 3,000 brokers at this point. Uh, so there's a lot of assistance available to small businesses and also individuals uh, through these individuals. Um, and then the third group are the certified application counselors, and they don't receive compensation from the Department of Health, but they will be offering assistance to individuals and small business, as businesses, and they will also be uh, receiving training. Um, groups that will be certified application counselors are include hospitals, for example, who see a lot of patients coming in who need health insurance, also be the health plans that are, also, that are offered on the marketplace, and um, they'll also be federally qualified health centers, for example, who receive funding to help uh, individuals enroll. So individuals and small businesses will have a choice of high quality, low cost private health insurance plans available to them. Um, and here are some of the highlights in terms of what these plans will look like. First of all, there's going to be a choice of plans in all areas of the state. And we really want to make sure that there was increased competition so that there are more options available to New Yorkers. Um, I also really want you to know that premiums um, um, for people who are paying for coverage for themselves have gone down about 50% in the state of New York. And that's before any sort of tax credits are applied. So if somebody is eligible for a tax credit, their premiums might be even lower. And um, also all the consumer protections that applied with the Affordable Care Act also apply with the marketplace. So for example, if you have a pre-existing condition, you won't be denied coverage. Um, and finally, all the plans are required to have good provider network, so there will be doctors available to see you as well. So briefly, these are some of the, these are the plans that will be offered on the marketplace. I think you'll recognize a lot of the different names. Um, and these are the dental plans that will be offered on the marketplace as well. And all the plans are required to offer 10 essential health benefits. Um, I won't go through, through the whole list, but I think some really important ones to note are uh, mental health and substance abuse. This is a required benefit, as is um, maternity and newborn care and pediatric vision and dental. So all the plans um, that are offered are required to uh, offer these services, and preventive services are at no cost to you as well. So it's really important to be getting that preventive care. Um, in terms of financial assistance, there will be a lot of financial assistance available uh, to people who shop through the New York State of Health. Um, many will be eligible, um, and there are really two different types of financial assistance that will be offered. Uh, the first are tax credits that will help lower the cost of premiums. So if you're an individual, for example, who earns just about $46,000 a year, or a family of four who earns about $94,000 a year, you may be eligible for help with your premiums. Um, then there's also going to be help uh, with cost sharing, so that means co-payments, deductibles. And so if you're um, a single adult that earns about $28,000, $29,000 a year, or a family of four that earns just under $59,000 a year, you may also receive help in terms of paying for your co-payments whenever you see the doctor or for your deductible. And all these... Um, Tax credits and subsidies are applied immediately when, you, um, when you're signing up. So when you're signing up and providing all your information, we'll be able to calculate if you qualify for any of this financial assistance and apply it in real time. So these are some of our available web resources. Uh, you can visit at newyorkstateofhealth.ny.gov. We have a number of different fact sheets in different, um, in different languages. Um, fact sheets cover different topics uh, for small businesses, for individuals, for immigrants, and then at a just more basic level, why do you need health insurance? Um, we also have newsletter templates. So for example, if you have newsletter blasts or email blasts that you send out, we have information in English and in Spanish that you can just download from our website site. 
We also have a list of all the in-person assisters who are going to be available um, to offer enrollment assistance. Um, and there's a map. Um, and then you can also look up by zip code, by languages spoken as well. Um, we also have county-specific maps of all the, uh, the health plans that will be available. And if you are just interested in getting a general idea as to what your premiums might look like, we also have a uh, tax credit and premium estimator where you would enter in where you live as well as um, uh, where you live as well as you know your family size, your income, and you could get an estimate of what your tax credit might look like on a monthly basis and then also what your premium might look like on a monthly basis. So this is our website and this is our phone number. I definitely recommend that you call, that you visit, um, and, and pass the word along because it's really, um, it's really important that you take this information that you have now and then spread it with your colleagues, with your friends, with your family members to make sure that more New Yorkers are able to sign up in quality, comprehensive health insurance. So thank you so much. Rebecca, thank you very much for the interesting data you provided on the Hispanic community. Just to sum up, interesting that 19% of those who are going to be enrolling are Hispanic, and of those who are going to be enrolling in the small business are 21%, and of all of those who you are anticipating to enroll, 18% speak Spanish. So that's something we have to keep in perspective. Rebecca, you have time for what question? Yes, I, One I, I question? have two. Depending. Two questions? Yeah. Who has a question? Up there, stand up. As you speak loudly. No, I don't have that information. Um, the, the data that we provided was from a report that we did to get an idea as to who would be enrolling, um, but we don't have the breakdown of those who have already signed up by race or ethnicity. Second question, Dr. Arce. Um, I understand that um, undocumented don't qualify, and in Jersey, because they are federally assisted, um, they are they, they they can't even go to the exchange. But I heard I understand now that in New York, they're going to pre-qualify them for emergency situations. That's a really thank you for bringing that up. So. Um, so those who are undocumented can sign up for emergency Medicaid through the New York State of Health. Um, also, pregnant uh, women can sign up for care through New York State of Health, and children under the age of 19 can sign up for Child Health Plus on New York State of Health, so even if they are undocumented. Um, and. Uh, and that's not necessarily the case in the federal marketplace. Um, we also recommend that even if you don't know if you're eligible, or for example, if you are undocumented but your child is eligible for a plan, um, that you contact our phone number or you visit our website. Um, it's completely secure, and they don't have to worry about that information being shared with anybody. So they should definitely visit the website. And even if they aren't eligible for a private health insurance plan due to their documentation, we can still refer them to somewhere where they can receive services, for example, like a federally qualified health center. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming. Absolutely. Thank you. And, I'm so sorry I have to run out now, but my email address is posted, so please feel free to contact me with any further questions. Thank you. We're very fortunate to have her. Okay, our next speaker is Kelsey Price. She is currently a senior account manager on the U.S. Hispanic advertising team at Google. She is responsible for creating, executing, and growing digital campaigns that help Fortune 500 advertisers reach the U.S. Hispanic audience. She works across all product types, search, display, video, to support innovative digital solutions to the U.S. Hispanic space and is particularly passionate about mobile. Kelsey? No, oh, sorry, one more thing. No media, no pictures. Um, no phone clicking, the, the police, digital police is here.
All right. Hi, good evening. Um